hockey fans, and welcome to a brand new edition of Ice Hawks Warm Up. Joseph Zakshevsky with you alongside Brittany Tools as we get you all squared away for Game 3 action between the Rockford Ice Hawks and the Manitoba Moose in the Central Division Finals. Coming up on the program, we'll hear from head coach Jeremy Collins and some of your favorite players, and Brittany and I will dive into the three keys ahead of the first home game of this Central Division Final Series against Manitoba. And Brittany, the Ice Hawks, games 1 and 2 in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. They got the job done away from home ice. The Ice Hawks continue to be the only team in the AHL undefeated in the postseason. Yeah, they got those two road games out of the way with wins in both of them. And that second game was a great win. The Manitoba started off the game with the first goal as they did in the first game, but the Ice Hogs are quick to kind of tie it up. So the Ice Hogs doing wonders on the road, especially here in the postseason. Let's take a look back to that game two action after coming off a of throwing 4-2 victory in game number one. The Ice Hogs, as you mentioned, Brittany, they would get off to a bit of a slow start, but it seems to be a, a trend they've been able to been battling back from as Manitoba would open up the game scoring, but that would wake up the Ice Hogs in game two action, and they'd take the scoring the rest of the way. Yeah, they've only gotten the first goal in a game one out of the five games they've played in this postseason. And then we said Tyler Secura was quick to tie it up with one of his net front goals. He got a nice rebound that a Comrie couldn't handle. And Di Domenico got the go-ahead goal with for the Ice Hogs on a power play. Chris Di Domenico proved to be the game-winning goal as well as the Ice Hogs would eventually prevail by a final of 4-1. to one. The power play we'll dive into in just a minute here has continued to be red hot for the Rockford Ice Hogs. And Tyler Secura with that game-tying tally really took the life out of the Manitoba Moose in that game too. They thought they had the momentum going their way up 1-0 on a, on a good goal by them, but Sakura would tie things up before the uh, first intermission would roll along. And then here you see Manitoba would put on spectacular efforts in front of goaltender Colin Delia, who has quietly put together a nice postseason as well. You see Cody Franson pretty prevalent in those highlights as well. Victor Svedberg, some big-time backliners for the Rockford Ice Hogs on the blue line. And the Ice Hogs, they would just seal the deal with the goals as they came, but they did not give Manitoba many opportunities to score the other way. No, they didn't. They had another big second period. You saw Domenico got the go-ahead goal, and then Carl Dahlstrom came back with another goal. Quick one-timer from the blue line to take to make it a two-goal game. And then we saw Andreas Martinson finish off the game with a nice empty net goal. But yeah, it was the Manitoba outshot the or outshot the Ice Hogs, but the Ice Hogs are able to make do with those few shots that they had and took advantage of the power play too with Christina Minico's goal. So the Ice Hogs come away with victorious in Game Two action, four to one. Your final there to take a two to nothing series lead now in the best of seven series. And you touched upon the Ice Hogs, the only team in the American Hockey League postseason to remain undefeated and impressive five and zero going into tonight's Game Three. Five and zero, and I think a lot of it has to do with that. Like I said, they have a big second period. They haven't had the first goal, so they had some catching up to do, and they have a plus eight goal differential in that second period, allowing just one goal in the entire five games they've played. So that second period has definitely been a clutch period for them. The Ice Hogs, the comeback kids, it was very much like that in the regular season as well. And you said it towards the beginning of this segment, Brittany, the Ice Hogs have only scored the first goal in a game once in the postseason. That actually came in game number one against Chicago. So they have given up the first goal in each of the last four games. But for whatever reason or another, it doesn't quite phase a team like you would expect them going down one nothing. The Ice Hogs have been able to bounce back largely because of that second period. And I think a lot of it is due to their special teams too. Their power play has been phenomenal, getting 10 power play goals in just the five games they've played out of the 28 chances they've had. So they have a really good power play. And also on the flip side, their penalty kill has been really great going, killing 14 of the 15 power penalties that they've had this season. And taking a look at some of those power play numbers for the Rockford Ice Hogs, it simply has been absolutely magnificent to watch this team work. And this is a team that's been pushing almost 40% successful on the man advantage. You mentioned 10 power play goals in just five games. And even you can go back to the previous two games of the regular season. So a seven game power play goal scoring streak. Who are these Ice Hogs? We did not see this team in the regular season with the man advantage. If you look at the season or the league leaders, all three leaders for the power play points are from the Ice Hogs. Christy Domenico and Adam Clendenning have six points on the power play, and Cody Franson is in third with five points. And Christy Domenico is also one of the leaders in power play goals with uh, two, along with Clendenning in second with number with one goal. So yeah, they've been great on the power play. And even home and away, it hasn't really phased them. They've been successful both on the road and in the one home game they've had so far <laughs> this postseason. The Ice Hogs returning home here for game three action against Manitoba. You touched upon the penalty, penalty kill as well. Only two power play goals against, and that was in that Chicago series. So, so far, they've been able to keep Manitoba 
Manitoba off the board on the special teams as well. It seems like the Ice Hawks have taken a more disciplined approach than what we might have seen in the first round against the Wolves. And also Manitoba has kind of taken a more disciplined route. They were averaging about 30 penalties, penalty minutes per game before game one against the Ice Hawks, and now they're down to about 22. So it's eight less penalty minutes per game, but the Ice Hawks, like you said, have been able to capitalize on the few chances they've had on the power play against the Moose. So they're going to look to continue this hot streak for the Rockford Ice Hawks going into game three action here this evening at a BMO Harris Bank Center. And the Ice Hawks looking to really put a stranglehold on this best of seven series, hoping to go up three games to none. Well, we'll hear from the coaching staff, some of your favorite players, and Brittany and I will dive into the three keys for tonight's game three matchup, all coming up here on Ice Hogs Warm Up.